If you want to make amazing espresso either at home or on the move and don't have access to an espresso machine, this might just be the answer to all your questions. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video where I'm going to be making coffee with this and I know the results are going to surprise you. Producing incredible espresso shots which also are great for mixing into coffee cocktails. And now I'm going to show you how to use the Wakako Pico Espresso. Welcome back to the Coffee Cocktail channel with me, Dan Fellows. So today I'm going to be talking you through this little espresso making beast, the Wakako Pico Presso. For those of you who are new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Dan. I'm the double world coffee and good spirits champion. And this channel is all about coffee. It's all about cocktails and kind of bringing the two together in really interesting and creative ways. So if this sounds like your jam, please subscribe to the channel below. It'd mean a lot. And feel free to share it with your friends who might love coffee or cocktails or both, just like me. So before I show you how this little thing works, how I've been getting some incredible results from the Pico Presso paired with the Malconic X54, I want to give a big shout out to Wakako as a thank you for sending me this and to Malconic for sending me the X54, both of which are incredible products. I'm not here to recommend products I don't believe in. So if you want to pick these up, I would recommend it if you're able to, and they're linked in the description below. So first of all, I'm going to kind of show you around the Pico Presso. So as you can see, it's very compact. It's got good weight to it, so it's sturdy and well manufactured. And it comes in this little nifty carry case, which is kind of handy if you want to take it with you on, the, on your travels. I wouldn't say be limited to just using this on the go though. If you're looking to make great quality espresso at home occasionally, and you don't want to take the leap to a sort of full blown espresso setup, or you don't have the space, it's very compact, tuck away in your cupboard. So the Pico Presso has two key sections really. The top section, which is our hot water chamber and then the bottom section which is our ground coffee chamber. So inside the hot water section you also have some cool stuff. You have your tamper which is again weighty, well manufactured. You can have a little collar for distributing the coffee into your basket which is very handy. You've got this little WDT needle distribution tool which is kind of useful, better than not having one but you could also use one with multiple prongs to get a better distribution more quickly. But again, nice touch. And then you have the hot water section with the nifty little pop out pump. So we're gonna put hot water in this chamber, use our pump to generate that pressure, force it through the bed of coffee, which will sit in here. So this is the coffee section. You've got, again, a very high quality shower screen for good distribution of water. You've got a scoop, which I think will Leave to one side because we're going to use scales. We've got an 18-ish, 19, 20 gram basket. I've been using 19 grams as standard and getting really good results. We have the screw on piece, which screws onto the hot water chamber. We've got this little base for catching any leftover drips. And then on the screw on base, you have this little piece, which essentially acts as a spout, just like it would on a porta filter to keep your extraction kind of going in one place. But what you can do is just pop this out leave it to one side and you've got essentially a naked basket underneath so you can see what's going on in the shop. So in addition to this, you're going to need a few fundamental things. Obviously, we're going to need coffee. We're going to need water. We're going to need a kettle to warm up our water. We're going to need a great quality grinder to grind our coffee, just like the X54. And you're going to need a cup. So I'm going to gather all those things together and we'll start making some coffee. So the first step is to preheat the chamber and also the cup just because we want to use as hot water as possible for this. A key challenge of any manual espresso brewer is temperature. So a higher temperature is going to give us obviously a hotter cup of coffee at the end rather than something tepid and also a higher extraction, which we really want to kind of emphasize and push using this particular piece of kit. Next up, we're going to grind 19 grams of coffee reasonably fine. You do need to have a very high quality grinder for using the Pico Presso to get the very best results because you do really want to dial it in and get accuracy in your grind size. Now we've ground the coffee, we can add the little shot collar on top of the basket and distribute this into the basket. Give this a little tap to level the bed. Then we can use our needle just to kind of distribute this round, break up any little clumps. Although you don't get too many on the X54. 
And then when we're happy with that, we can give it our first tamp, which kind of goes down as far as the collar. Remove the collar and give it a second tamp, just to be sure we've got kind of full pressure on that. So now, I'm gonna add our shower screen, which I've forgotten to do many, many times. So don't do that. You always wanna make sure it looks like this before you put it into the chamber. And if you don't, it won't work well. Definitely do that. Now we can get rid of our hot water from our cup in the chamber. You can pump a little bit of the hot water through as well to make sure that the whole chamber is fully heated up. So then we're gonna grab our scales and a cup, tear this to zero, make sure everything's reading zero, including a timer, which is built into the scales, but you could use your watch. We're gonna assemble the Pico Presso, just like so. Have our base thing ready for when we've finished so we can cut it and just move it to one side. And then we're ready to add our hot water. So being very careful, we're gonna fill the chamber almost to the top. Not quite, because you don't wanna burn yourself, obviously, but reasonably high. Gonna screw on the lid. Again, be very careful. So now this is all assembled, we're ready to brew. And you need to get into one of two poses, either a wide stance, which works, but my preferred stance, the Pico Neal. So I like to do this because I like to see what's going on in my extraction. And I'm just gonna talk you through my recipe as I do it. So for the first 10 seconds, we're gonna pump every second. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. This is our kind of gentle saturation, I guess, almost like a pre-infusion. We're gonna wait until we get to 20 seconds, and then we're gonna carry on pumping every second. You can see what's going underneath. Now we're starting to get some extraction. It looks so good. Again, every second, just to get that real nice crema. Keep the pressure in there. We're at 40 seconds and 30 grams. Seven, 48, and as soon as I get nearly to 38 grams, I'm gonna cut. That was 50 seconds that this took. And as you can see, it's just beautiful. So to reiterate the kind of method behind this, pump every second for 10 seconds, stop for 10 seconds, and then pump every second up until sort of 50, 55 seconds, and then you want your yield to be double what your dose was. So I put 19 grams in the Pico, got 38 grams out, and I think you'd be pretty darn happy with that, even in a coffee shop. So there is your Pico Presso, Espresso, and I'm gonna give it a taste, I'm gonna measure the extraction, and we'll see. Banging. Genuinely, this is super tasty. For the value of these two pieces of kit, what you get in the cup is just amazing. Again, lots of sweetness, loads of body. The creme is persistent, but not artificial. This is achieved through the pressure of the pumping rather than a basket, which will restrict the flow. It's just super tasty. Obviously you use great coffee going into it. So the reason I've been testing this so much is because I've been making espresso martinis without espresso machines. This was by far the best brewer of all the ones we tried out. Anytime you see espresso in a coffee cocktail recipe, you could use this as a substitute. So really versatile, really portable. So for the espresso nerds out there, this is measuring at 11.83 TDS, which is the total dissolved coffee solids in the liquid, which is an equivalent of an extraction of around about 24.5%. So super high, like astoundingly high. And this is a trend I've found on this brewer quite a lot. So I'm not getting any real kind of bitterness or any rough astringency. If you found your extraction was too bitter or it was exceeding that 55, 60 seconds, you could go for a coarser grind size, your shot would run quicker and extract less. If you wanted to extract more, you could grind finer and vice versa. So there we have a shot from the Pico Presso. I'm really impressed. The link's in the description below. Give it a try for yourself. Make sure you share your recipes with each other and share them with me. And I look forward to seeing what you think. So thank you very much to Wakako. Thanks to Malconic for the X54. And thank you to you for watching. See you soon.